Hi, I'm Gareth Green, and in this video, we're going to be considering how to manage music in which the time signature changes, which is something that causes a lot of confusion, catches people out very easily. I mean, it's one thing, isn't it, if the whole piece of music's in 4-4 four, four time, or the three beats in every single bar, you kind of get your pulse going, you get the sense of four beats or three beats in a bar. But what about these pieces where the composer insists on changing the time signature as you go. And you will find, particularly in 20th and 21st century music, that this happens more often than people realise. And it's amazing how easy it is to make a mistake just because you're kind of feeling the rhythm rather than calculating it. And before you know it, you've added a beat here, taken a beat away there, halved a value here, doubled a value there. So it's really good to, when you're learning rhythms in pieces with changing time signatures to make sure you have a means of checking out the rhythm. And that's the little technique that I want to share with you during this video. So we've got three different rhythms on the screen. Let's have a look at this first one here. So we've got one bar, one measure of 4-4, four, four, then we switch to 3-4, then we switch to 2-4, then to 3-4, then to 4-4. Four, four. Now, one good piece of news about a piece of music like this is that, of course, the bottom number stays the same. So that's telling us that we're counting crotchet beats or quarter note beats. So as long as we can keep those crotchet beats, those quarter note beats going, actually it doesn't really matter because the underlying pulse beat stays the same. All we've got to do is to make sure we're counting four of the same things there, three there, two there, three there, four there. So let's just try this first one and see how we get on. Now, you might want to pause the video and try this on your own first, or you may think, no, I want to kind of have a look at this and hear how it goes. Then you might like to try it on your own, or you might like to try kind of duetting it with me by rewinding the video. So just to kind of build a bit of confidence in this. Okay, now you can clap the rhythm, you can play it on one note on an instrument, doesn't really matter. The important thing is to count. So because that bottom number is always four, we're counting crotchets or quarter note beats all the way through. So let's count a bar for nothing, and then we'll have a go at doing this. One thing is when you're learning to deal with rhythms in general, but particularly with changing time signatures, if you're unsure about it, slow the speed down because it just gives you a bit more thinking time. So let's have a go at this first one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. If you can manage that, then of course you can speed it up if the piece requires you to do that. So you see what I was thinking about there? Just registering that the lower number is always the same. So at least the pulse is consistent with the same kind of musical value. It's just making sure we're changing those upper numbers according to each measure, each bar we come across. Now, if you're thinking, well, that's great, but actually I got in a complete muddle trying to do that, one thing you can do is to halve each of the beats, each of the pulses. And so instead of counting one, two, three, four, you count one and two and three and four. And. Because if you put those little ands in between, if you think about it, if the pulse, the beat, is a crotchet or a quarter note pulse, those little ands are giving you the quavers in between, the eighth notes in between. Now, because we've got lots of eighth notes or quavers in this, these are going to be much clearer if we count the ands. So if you're struggling to count the crotchets or the quarter note beats, Count these ands. So let me show you how the same thing works if we do that. One and two and three and 
four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and one and two and one and two and three and one and two and three and four and. So that may seem a very kind of fussy way of doing things and you wouldn't really want to think it that way when you're putting your ultimate performance together but as a means of calculating do you see how useful it is to be able to think well this starts on one and two and this one comes on three that comes on and, that comes on four, that comes on and, and so it goes on. So in the next bar, the next measure, one and, two and, three and. You see how every single note then fits. So you can see where the, where this rhythm fits into that counting. And the next one, because you've got a dotted crotchet or a dotted quarter note followed by a quaver or an eighth note, it's gonna start on one, and we're still holding on to it when we get to the second beat because it's one and a half beats long. So it's one and plus the first half of two. And the next note comes on the and after two. So one and two and you see how that works. So the and is quite useful in pinpointing where those eighth notes, those quavers go, especially when you've got dotted rhythms. Ultimately, you want to be able to get this back up to speed and probably just count those quarter notes, those crotches. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, off. So you see how that works. But if you're having trouble with that, I'm hoping that this is a useful explanation of how to break it down uh, first of all, by slowing it down and recognizing that you're counting crotchets or quarter note beats in every single bar, every single measure, but just adjusting your upper number. But then if that's difficult, halve what you're counting. Use these ands as a means of locating where every single one of those eighth notes or quavers comes. Okay, well, let's go on to our second example. And this time we've got eight as the lower number. So what does eight mean when it's the lower number of a time signature? It means we're counting quavers or we're counting eighth notes. So again, notice I've got eight, 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 eight. So it's the same scenario as the first rhythm we were looking at, but again, we're just changing upper numbers, six, five, three, six, five. And this is gonna feel slightly strange because any time signature with five at the top is an irregular time signature. So it kind of feels like, oh, we've got two beats, but they're not quite evenly adjusted. So, you know, like this one is a sort of three plus two. This one is a two plus three. So that sort of thing can really disorientate. Before you know it, because you've played a six, eight bar there, you'll end up sticking another a quaver or a eighth note in there and you'll have another six eight bar instead of a five eight bar so really counting to make sure that we've got those upper numbers working so this time we are counting the quavers or the eighth notes and if you're a little bit puzzled by time signatures and thinking oh dear i don't know what this all means why is he talking about eight as a lower number meaning this we've got other uh, resources that you can look up and uh, see how those things work. Okay, now what we're going to do is exactly what we did in the first exercise, but this time we're going to count these quavers or these eighth notes. And I'm just adjusting the number I'm counting for each bar, each measure, according to the upper number. So let's have a go at this reasonably slowly. I'll count a bar for nothing. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now of course, what was going on there? I was counting 
six here, five there, three there, six there, and so on. But of course, now we're counting eighth notes or quavers as our basic unit. Every time we come across a quarter note or a crotchet, I've got to count two of those quavers, two of those eighth notes. So this is going to go one, two, three, a note on each of those. When I come here, that's number four, and we're holding on to it for number five. This comes on number six. So it's just realizing now that we're not counting crotchets or quarter note beats. We're now counting eighth notes or quavers. All right, and then as you can sort of calculate everything from there. So there must be two quavers in a crotchet, two eighth notes in a quarter note. So you can see how this works. In this bar, it's a straight one, two, three, four, five. Now the funny thing is, after a bar of six, it's very easy to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And before you know it, you've got another bar of six. So you've got to be really sure you're counting one, two, three, four, five. When we come to this bar, we've got one, two on that first note because there are two quavers in a crotchet, two eighth notes in a quarter note. One, two, and this one comes on three. In this bar, well, we've got these two sixteenth notes, these two semi-quavers. So they must be happening inside one quaver or one eighth note. So this is going one, two and three. See how that works? One, two, three. So one, two and three. This one, of course, a dotted crotchet, a dotted quarter note, that's going to be three quavers, isn't it? Three eighth notes. So one, two and three, four, five, six. You see how that works? And then the same principle applies here. We've got a dotted note here, but a dotted quaver, dotted eighth note followed by a semi-quaver, a sixteenth note, means it's going to go one, two, and. So that's going to come on the end. One, two, and. And then this is going to go three, four, and then five comes on the last one. So having just tidied that up, if you got that sorted out straight away on your own, brilliant. If you're thinking, now I got lost there, I'm hoping that some of those things I've just explained are going to help. Let's have a go at this one again. Okay, I'll count six for nothing. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So hopefully you can kind of see, oh yeah, that's how that goes. And by practicing it slowly, you can then incrementally increase the tempo. Just increase the tempo very gradually, and you'll find you can do this really fast and quite slickly in no time at all. But if you kind of just guess it, You'll be amazed how those five eight bars turn into six eight bars and funny things start happening with the rhythm. So count it, calculate it, and you're in business. Okay, now to the third rhythm on this page. We have an added complication here, and I wanted to include this because it happens in real music. In the first exercise, we had changing time signatures, but the lower number was always four. Second exercise, Upper numbers kept changing, but the lower numbers were always eight. So what are we going to do here? Because we've got four here, eight there, four there, eight there, four there. So we're switching between four and eight. Now that is a bit of a pain, isn't it, really? Because how do I count crotchets or quarter note beats in this measure, that bar, and then switch to counting quavers or eighth notes there and uh, gets me in a bit of a muddle? The thing to remember about this sort of exercise is this. Quaver equals quaver, okay? So eighth note equals eighth note. So in this case, it's definitely worth breaking down the rhythm and counting each individual quaver because two quavers here in three, four will be the same as two quavers here in seven, eight. But if you're sort of thinking, oh, what am I going to do with changing crotchets to you know, counting in crotchets or quarter notes to counting in quavers or eighth notes? Oh, it's going to be a muddle. 
count the quavers all the way. So you can go like this. You can, I mean, I think it's still best when you've got four at the bottom to count the out. So one and two and three and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, four, five. One and two and three and four and. You see how I was doing that? Because then you can see how quaver equals quaver. Eighth note equals eighth note all the way through. Okay, let's try doing exactly that. So I'll count in a bar, a measure, and we'll do it in the initial time signature. One and two and three and. One and two and three and. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One and two and. One, two, three, four, five. One and two and three and four and. So do you see by thinking quaver equals quaver, eighth note equals eighth note, doesn't matter if the lower number is four or eight, that is our common denominator. So instead of trying to sort of think, well, I'm counting crotchets here, so do I try to count three and a half crotchets there? No, don't do that. Just think, okay, well, the quavers, the eighth notes, are the things that are the common denominator. Let's count them, make sure they're always the same and it will all work out. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a, an insight into how to tackle these situations. So when you're practicing a piece of music that's got this kind of challenge, you now have a means of working out what those rhythms are, counting them and rehearsing them so that changes in time signature don't catch you out. And if you're a composer, well, it's always worth considering, are you writing a piece that would be quite interesting if it included changes in the time signature? It may be that your piece doesn't work at all if you start messing about with the time signature. But often people are saying, well, I compose in a certain way. I'm a little bit kind of stuck with it. I suppose I'm looking for new ways of doing things. Well, here's an idea that you may wish to try. So there we are. It's for performers, it's for conductors, it's uh, for composers, anybody involved in the world of music. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, let me point you to the Music Matters website, www.mmcourses.co.uk. Loads of interesting things on there, free resources, and there are things that we're asking you to pay for as well. But if you go on to courses, you'll find a whole list of courses that are relevant to the musician. And in there, one of our courses is a rhythm bootcamp course. Now, lots of musicians really struggle with rhythm. They can play the notes, they can read the pitch, they can do all that stuff. Uh, composers who can kind of think melodies and think chords, but ooh, how do I notate this rhythm? So if you're having any kind of bother playing rhythms or writing down rhythms that you're wanting to compose, or you just want to feel more confident about rhythms, can I recommend to you our Rhythm Boot Camp course, which is really digging in on how to read rhythms and how to notate rhythms so you're absolutely secure with it. And in many, many years of working with students, of examining, adjudicating, doing all sorts of things, honestly, I can tell you that more people have trouble with rhythm than they do with any other aspect of their playing. So if you're sort of thinking, yeah, rhythm, a bit vulnerable there, this could be a real lifesaver for you. So have a look at the Rhythm Bootcamp course. And when you kind of scroll down through the information, you can see the list of each of the video lessons and you can read much more about what that course is about. And once you're signed on to a course, you have lifetime access to it. So you can come back to it time and time again, work at it in your own pace at times that suit you. And um, it's, it's yours for life. So www.mmcourses.co.uk